All right, let's go ahead and talk about the inverse function theorem. So uh, we kind of need this theorem to prove some of the uh, derivative formulas that we'll be talking about in the next few videos. So we want to uh, establish this theorem here. Um, so we're not really going to prove this theorem. Uh, it's, it's kind of advanced, but uh, we can get a general idea of how it works uh, with this picture here. So uh, let's say we have a function y equals f of x. Its graph kind of looks like this. Uh, here's the point a comma b. And uh, this red dotted line here is y equals x. And uh, this green curve over here, this is y equals uh, f inverse of x. So that's uh, the inverse function for f of x. So um, remember that uh, if a function has an inverse, then uh, their graphs, their uh, reflections over the line y equals x. So if you have a uh, graph of a function, then um, its inverse function, uh, the graph is just the reflection over the line y equals x. So you can kind of see that, uh, if you look at it like this, um, not really a perfect drawing, but you can kind of see that it's kind of like a mirror image over this line y equals x. So that's how inverse functions work. Um, but anyway, what we want to look at here is, um, you know, if we know the derivative of a function uh, at a point, then how do we find the derivative of the inverse function at the corresponding point? So what does it mean corresponding point? Well, let's take a look at this point a comma b. Um, if a comma b is on the graph of y equals f of x, well then first of all, we can reflect this point over the line y equals x, uh, and when we reflect over y equals x, then the coordinates swap. So this point here is going to be b comma a. So this point, uh, we'll label that b comma a. All right. So uh, a comma b, here's b comma a. So if we reflect a comma b over the line y equals x, then we're at b comma a. Also, this inverse graph is the reflection of this graph over the line y equals x. So because a comma b was on this graph, then the point b comma a is on the inverse graph. All right. So another way of saying that is uh, if uh, basically, so when x is a, y equals f of x is b, right? So in other words, uh, b equals f of a. All right. And uh, what we're saying over here then is uh, a equals f inverse of b. All right. So if b is f of a, then, you know, uh, take the inverse function of both sides and you'll get uh, a equals f inverse of b. So, of course, there are some technical details here um, that we need to worry about, but uh, for what we're doing, we don't have to be uh, so concerned. Anyway, um, we have these two points here, so let's go ahead and draw tangent lines. Uh, let's take a tangent line at this point uh, here, a comma b. So the tangent line is roughly kind of sort of going to look a little something like this. Uh, try not to screw this up here. So that's our uh, tangent line. All right. Um, let's call this L1, just for uh, line 1. So we'll call it L1. And then let's also draw a tangent line over here at this point, B, comma A. So a tangent line over here is kind of sort of roughly going to look a little something like this. All right. So that's our tangent line there. Yikes. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, fix some of this. Okay, so uh, notice our tangent lines here intersect in a point, uh, and it's this point right here. And what is that point? Um, well, we don't really know the exact coordinates of that point, and also we don't really care. Uh, all we know is it's on the line y equals x, right? So these tangent lines intersect on the line y equals x. And if you're on the line y equals x, then your x and y coordinates are the same thing, right? So whatever this point is, uh, the x and y coordinates are the same. So let's just call this point C comma C. All right, that's what we'll call this point. Um, you know, x coordinate is C, so y coordinate also has to be C. They're the same thing. Okay, so let's start talking about derivatives now. Um, here's y equals f of x. Here's the point a comma b. So what uh, is f primed of a? Let's think about that. Uh, f primed of a. f prime of a equals what? Well, remember, uh, the derivative at a point is the slope of the tangent line at that point, right? So this is uh, going to be the slope of L1. So f prime of a is the slope uh, of L1, all right? And what's the slope of L1? Well, uh, it's just a straight line, and we have two points on the line, right? We have this point a comma b, and we have c comma c. So what's the slope of L1? It's uh, b minus c 
over a minus c. Okay, change in y over change in x. So it's b minus c over a minus c. All right. So we'll leave that like that for now. Um, now let's talk about the inverse function. So here, uh, I think I forgot to mention, um, this second tangent line we drew, uh, we're going to call that L2. So that'll be uh, L2. L2. So L1 is the first tangent line, L2 is the second one we drew. <clears throat> so now let's find the derivative <clears throat> of the inverse function at this point. So this function is f inverse of x, all right? So um, the way we denote the derivative for that is going to be f inverse and then parentheses primed and then it's of b because okay, here the x-coordinate is b so we want the derivative of this inverse function when x is b and uh, again it's just a derivative at a point so uh, it's the same thing as the slope of the tangent line and um, let's go ahead and write that so this equals the slope uh, of L2. And what's the slope of L2? Well, again, we'll just do, uh, it's a straight line, so we'll just do change in y over change in x. We have these two points here. So the y-coordinate here is a, y-coordinate here is c. <clears throat> so it's going to be a minus c, and then divided by b minus c. So the slope of L2 is a minus c over b minus c. So do you notice anything here? Um, a minus c over b minus c, that's actually the reciprocal of this. So if you take this, and flip it, then you get this. So, um, in other words, this equals uh, 1 divided by the slope of L1. And what was the slope of L1? That's uh, f prime of a, right? So this is uh, 1 over f prime of a. Okay? So, um, Again, this isn't really like a formal proof, but it's just a geometric idea of what's going on here. So, um, what we just show, uh, what we've just shown, is that uh, f inverse primed of b equals one over f prime of a. So, in other words, uh, let's go ahead and write that up here. F inverse primed of b equals one over f prime of a, um, provided that b equals f of a, right? So if you have um, a function here and it's inverse and you have this point a comma b on the graph of the function, then uh, you know, if you want the derivative of the inverse at the point where x equals b um, on its graph over here, then you could just use this formula here. All right? So that's for at a point. Um, we can also talk about this more generally. So if we extend this uh, more generally, then we could say, um, you know, let's use a different color over here. We could say y equals f of x, all right? So um, we know that f prime of x equals dy dx, right? That's just notation that we've talked about. And if y equals f of x, then that's the same thing as saying x equals f inverse of y. Uh, if the inverse function exists, you know, uh, got to worry about that. Uh, but let's not be concerned with all the tiny details here. So y equals f of x means f prime of x equals dy dx. And then here, um, we have f inverse of y. So f inverse primed of y equals what? Not dy dx, because here the variable is y. Okay, so here, uh, here's y, here's x, dy dx. Here's x, here's y. So this is going to be dx dy. All right. So using this notation, um, basically, uh, you know, we can take these, this type of notation here and stick it up into here, um, then what we're going to have is this kind of notation here. dy dx equals 1 over dx dy. Right? These parentheses technically aren't really necessary, but you probably should have them, uh, just to be clear. So uh, this is pretty much what the inverse function theorem says. Um, there are actually a lot of different ways of stating it, but basically if you want to find the derivative of the inverse function, find the derivative of the function, and then just take the reciprocal, uh, roughly speaking, in general. Um, and of course we could also express this, uh, let's erase this. We could also express this like so, uh, dx dy equals 1 divided by dy dx. Right? 
we can also say it like that. So these pretty uh, this is pretty much the same thing here, just uh, a slightly different way of writing it. So that's what the inverse function theorem says, um, and we'll be using this uh, a few times in the next few videos for some of the derivative formulas that we'll be talking about.